Today we're doing a full face of some drugstore makeup. I have some very hyped up lunches here that I have been meaning to try for quite a while. Got the new NYX Beetlejuice collection and just like a bunch of stuff that's launched in the past month or two that I've seen get some pretty good reviews. So I wanna give you guys my thoughts on them. So we're gonna do full face of new drugstore makeup. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna use are these Milani liquid bronzing drops that just launched. Of course, we've seen this kind of thing from like e.l.f., Drunk Elephant, a lot of brands have this. It's very popular, especially it was for the summertime. I'm not always big on liquid bronzers. I mean, I'll use them once in a while on like a no makeup makeup day. I do self tan, Oh, oh my, that is dark. Okay, I self tan once in a while. And a lot of times I don't tan my face, so it's kind of nice to even things out. But yeah, this is very much bronzy. I just feel like these all make me look really, really orange. But we'll blend this in. Yeah, I feel like these always just enhance my redness right away. But usually I do wear them with foundation, not on their own. But yeah, they have a little bit of a orangey <laughs> feel to them. I like to use these with skin tints because I feel like it gives me a little more coverage. I do have this new skin tint from Wet n Wild. I've been so curious about trying this one. It's niacinamide skin tint with hyaluronic acid peony extract in the formula. Interesting. I'm going to use the shade Light today. I've been really curious about this because I love Wet n Wild's skin tint. It's one of my favorites for oily skin. This one might be a little bit more for maybe more dry skin. Let's just like put a little bit on the face here and I'll blend it out. When Wild stuff is like crazy affordable as well. They have all this stuff like available at Walmart. Ooh, it's very glass like on the skin. It blends really nicely. It's a very, very liquidy. I'm almost wondering if I got honestly too much product. But yeah, this is real glassy and dewy looking which I do have more oily skin, so I don't always go for that effect. I think their other skin tint is definitely a little more mattifying. It almost looks like my face when I applied <laughs> the Patrick Ta foundation last week, which I don't have a video on yet, but it'll probably be my next testing new like high-end makeup. We'll see. I just don't know if that one's for me, so we'll see if this one's a little bit better, but it is so <laughs> glowy on the skin. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to have to look a little crazy for a moment because I am going to do my eyeshadow next. So let's zoom in even more. I got the NYX Beetlejuice palette. I picked it up at Target. I wasn't going to buy it, but then I saw it in store and I was like, Ugh, I just, I have to try it. Now this is a little pricey for drugstore. I think it's almost $20. I just really loved the colors in here and I wanted to see if it was a good formula. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and use Shrinker in my crease. I am so excited to see the new Beetlejuice movie. I think I'm gonna go see it next weekend with one of my friends and I can't wait. I just rewatched the first one, which I was never really into Beetlejuice growing up. I know that, didn't they like play it on Disney Channel before? Or maybe I'm crazy, but I swear on like the in the olden days, they played it on Disney Channel. I don't think it's, it's not like a Disney movie though. Um, and I'd be like, oh, this is kind of creepy. I know it came out in like the 80s, so definitely a little before my time. But I feel like now as an adult, it's kind of fun. And I cannot wait to see what they do with the next one. It's so fun that they brought back some original characters. All right, we're going to take a little bit of this matte sparkly black called Nightmare Material. So far that brown actually looks really good on the lid. Now this one I'm a little unsure about. Typically with sparkly mattes, I guess it's not technically a matte then. I will pat because they don't blend well. I feel like they can be a little bit powdery and patchy if you try to like do windshield wiper motions. So we're just going to kind of pat this in the outer corner. They're just, uh, I don't like when they include a bunch of shimmers in black shades. I just kind of want it to be matte. Let's actually see if this will blend. Not too bad. It's definitely getting really, really smoky, but I feel like it's so hard to control. I'm gonna get a clean brush and blend it with that because I feel like this is getting everywhere. It definitely looks more gray when you start blending it out. It's not like the most pigmented black, but 
She's a little messy, a little smoky, which I feel like it fits for Beetlejuice. I wanna see if I can get this green to show up on the lower lash line. Okay. I just wanted to do a fun green and purple look, but yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I wish this had a matte green in there. Let me try wetting the brush and then doing it that way. Just so it has a little more control. But yeah, I feel like a matte Green would have been perfect, but we can definitely like use the shade on the lid, but yeah, it just looks a little bit weird. Okay, let's see if this will come together. I'm gonna put on the purple shimmer on my lid. The shimmers are honestly very pretty in this palette. They feel really good quality, like almost like better honestly than ColourPop. If I could make like a comparison, cause I feel like they're a similar price point, but yeah, I'm impressed with the shimmers. I think the mattes are pretty decent too. I just didn't like the sparkly black. I'm adding just a little bit of that black shimmer here in the lower lash line mix with the green just to kind of deepen that up. I'm gonna use my ColourPop white eyeliner on the lower lash line just so it really pops that green. The green will just stand out more against the white. And we'll definitely clean that up with concealer because we look insanely crazy right now. I do realize, but it should come together. <laughs> don't know if I'm like obsessed with this look, but <laughs> we're trying here. I did pick up this Revlon concealer the other day. It's new. It's called a Flexwear Full Cover. So it's supposed to be a full coverage concealer. It has a nice tofu applicator. This is in shade three, I think. Let's try this out. Ooh. I can definitely tell this is high coverage. Let's see if it'll cover these blemishes down here. And we'll blend that out here, clean everything up. <laughs> I'm just kind of bringing it along the edges here too, just so it's not so smoky. I just want it to look really nice and clean. But yeah, the coverage is really nice on this one. It felt like it was going to be super full, but once you kind of start blending it, you can tell that it's almost like a hydrating more serum-like formula, but it still has really great coverage. But I feel like it looks really good. It's not too dry, which can be a problem with more full coverage concealers. And we're looking, yeah, pretty flawless, very dewy. So... We gotta get some powder on this face. I don't have a new one to try. I'm honestly just using the last of my Givenchy pink powder that they unfortunately ruined with their new formula. I'm hoping they are going back to the old one though because I saw it's out of stock now, but if you haven't seen that drama, that's all over TikTok right now. I will take some powder all over the face too. Probably my Huda. Because I use this with pretty much any new foundation. Because it's my just tried and true. I feel like the eyes look so much better <laughs> now that we've cleaned that up. It's just a trust the process moment. I am going to take the bright white in the palette too. I love a matte white inner corner. This is called the Great Beyond. And I'm just going to, yeah, use that to just brighten that inner corner. But yeah, that kind of helps just brighten things a little bit. Next up, brows. I did get a new e.l.f. brow pencil. I don't know if this is a new launch, but I've never tried their waterproof brow pencil, so I wanna try this today. Let's use shade just blonde. I also have taupe, but oh, sometimes the blonde one's a little warm. Maybe I should swatch them. Actually, blonde looks pretty good. It's pretty neutral. Let's see what taupe looks like. Oh, taupe's pretty dark. That's taupe and blonde. I did see that these were available at Walmart. Let's try the blonde shade. It doesn't have like a micro tip, but it's also not angled. So it's just kind of a nice point. I can tell this is a really creamy brow pencil, which I don't like most times. I like something that's a little in between. I want it to still be a little bit hard so you're not getting too much color like this is almost too melty where it's making them look a little thick and i feel like when it's too creamy like this they don't always last the best so i can already tell by the formula 
that I don't really care for it. I like just a more precise one that I have to push down a little bit harder just so I'm not putting too much product down and I'm not going overboard because yeah with this one you can definitely go overboard pretty easily and get kind of those block looking brows. But I'm just going to blend all that together. Now this I've been hearing amazing things about. This is a new Maybelline brow gel called Super Lock and I've heard this is really comparable to the Rare Beauty brow gel which is one of my favorites. So I'm really excited to try this one. I feel like the drugstore's been needing a good brow laminating wax. Definitely a very similar spoolie to the Rare Beauty. Oh wow. Yeah, that actually does feel like the Rare Beauty one. I can definitely feel it pushing up the brows really nicely. It's not too sticky, but it has that nice gel hold. The brush actually holds quite a bit of product, almost more than the Rare Beauty one. It actually works really nice. We'll see if it holds up throughout the day. But yeah, it's very comparable. Very much a good laminating brow gel. I can tell already. That's nice. I feel like I don't like my brows right now just because they look so dark from that pencil. But the brow gel is looking good. Let's move on to mascara. And I've been hearing, again, some really good things about this one from Maybelline. It's the firework one. Look at that before and after. I hope I get this effect too. But I feel like Maybelline and L'Oreal have some real good mascaras. Plus, this is so fun. I love the pink packaging on this. That is, so yeah, Sometimes I don't like mascaras right away, like the first use. Um, just because sometimes I feel like they're a little wet and I like the formula to dry out a bit, but why does this seem like it's kind of shaped funny? I don't know if that's normal. It's like curving up very slightly. This is a really nice lengthening and separating formula though. I love that. I enjoy a lot of length. So it's definitely doing a good job of that. Really nice that you can just kind of keep building it too. Let's go on the lower. But yeah, it doesn't seem to clump up too bad at all and it just really lengthens. It's not the most volumizing though. But yeah, it looks good. I feel like you get some really good length with this one. For bronzer, I'm just going to go ahead and use the NYX Buttermelt Bronzer because this one's just really popular and there hasn't been really any new ones that have been interesting. These are like so pigmented, I always forget. A light hand is definitely better. But they do blend out pretty nicely, but yeah, they are just so pigmented. I feel like I have a hard time finding like the perfect match because I feel like this one honestly looks a little orange. This side got a little wild, so I'm just kind of lightly tapping my foundation brush over that. And then I'll put my powder back on top of it. But now it's kind of all blended in. I was thinking if I want to use the new Beetlejuice Blush Trio, but I think I really have been wanting to play with this Morphe. I would consider Morphe Drugstore. It's in the drugstore section of Ulta, and I haven't purchased anything from them in years, but they came out with these really fun cream blushes that are like spiraled. Mine I already swatched, so I did ruin the spiral a little bit. This is in Pleasured. I did hear that these are insanely pigmented too. I'm going to try this BK Beauty brush here. It's a very like melon pink. We'll see if it matches with their eye look. I don't know if it'll look good. Oh, that's cute. This is like a baby pink. But yeah, really pigmented. I'm using like the smallest amount and it is a cream. So it's going to feel a little sticky at first, a little dewy. But yeah, it's a cute color. I love a good baby pink. I've been dying to try this CoverGirl lip stain. I've been seeing it again all over TikTok, so I want to try it. I've been seeing people put it on and doing like a clear gloss over top of it. And it's kind of like a felt tip marker. This one is in natural blush. I don't know if you need to line. Or if you can use this as a liner maybe. It definitely feels like a marker. I have like a little bit of lip balm on so it might not apply super precise but yeah I'm kind of overlining a little bit with this stain which seems to be working okay 
and just filling in. I am a little bit worried about how fast these will dry out, but I think if you like, I don't know, I don't really hear the liquid when you shake it, but I mean, this is a really cute fall color. And I thought I would just put some lip oil on top, which I have this hard candy one. Um, they came out with these lip slides. It's a creamy lip oil. They had lip oils before, but I think these are a little more like pigmented. So let's try this one. I'm seeing if they improve the scent, but I think I think it's the same. That was kind of the thing that people didn't like about them, but this is in sugar spin. Okay, that definitely feels like an oil. It's real slippery. But it just gives some extra shine. But I've seen a lot of people do just like clear glosses with these stains as well. I think the scent is less intense on these. It's not so bad. It's not as plasticky as the other ones were. All right, let's set this down. We're just going to use trusty Milani Make It Last setting spray. This stuff is a tried and true. And I will be doing a wear test today. So as usual with my testing new makeups, I don't like to just... Put the product on and show you guys that first impression i like to see how it wears throughout the day as well so it's a little more helpful because i might like something when i first put it on but then like my skin it's so oily you never know if stuff is going to hold up so it's just nice to see you know how it sets throughout the day but yeah we're looking very shiny with that skin tint like ugh, i don't know if it's going to hold up very well to be honest with you i'm just adding a little bit more powder just because we were looking still a little shiny. And we will see how this holds up. I might try to do like a three hour check-in and then we'll try to do like a six plus hour check-in towards the end of the day as well. So I will see you guys a little bit later, but here is just a quick close up. We do look very flawless, but yeah, definitely very shiny in my opinion already. So a little nervous for how this is gonna wear. Since it's a skin tint, it might be okay, but we'll see. <laughs> So I'll see you guys in a bit. Wanted to do a little three hour update in the natural lighting here. So I look a little bit less greasy, I feel like in natural lighting, just cause my studio lights, it sometimes looks a little over the top, but everything is holding up pretty well. I would say I'm just getting a little bit greasy. So I'm curious to see what we're gonna look like a little bit later, but just wanted to give you guys a quick update. Everything's looking good so far, just a little shiny here. All right guys, it's been about seven hours, so we're gonna wrap up the video here because I do wanna put this up today. We are definitely very, very shiny here, but like it doesn't look bad. I would say it's not breaking up our foundation at all, but it is just very, very shiny. Let's go ahead and just press my powder brush onto it. Like honestly, this does clear that shine right up and I could still wear my makeup for even longer. I typically do touch up throughout the day. So that's not like a huge issue, a little bit annoying, but it's definitely workable. I think using this foundation again, I will not use it with a luminous bronzing drop. That's for sure. I think that definitely added to the shine. And I feel like this is gonna wear even better using one of my more mattifying primers. So I think the foundation is going to be good because yeah, I don't hate it. And I didn't use any mattifying products besides my powder today. The Milani Sunkissed Bronzing Drops, I personally can do without. It's just not a product that's for me. I'm not a bronzing drop girl. I've tried so many. I think they're just as good as Drunk Elephant, if not better. A lot of the products we use today, I feel like perform just as good as high end or even better in my opinion. But yeah, for me, I just, I do not need the Milani. I have so many bronzing drops and yeah, it definitely, I feel like, contributed to some of the luminosity on the skin but wet and wild just does good skin tints in my opinion and i feel like the skin still looks extremely perfected i mean you can see a little bit of sinking into the pores it's caking up around my nose quite a bit actually but i really don't hate it i feel like the coverage is really good the nyx and beetlejuice palette i actually think is really nice quality especially these shimmers stunning not a crease in sight on the eyes it has held up so well and even some of my high-end indie brand shimmers crease on my eyes this has held up great today my only gripe is just the color story if it were me making this palette i would love to turn this shimmery black into just a matte black some people were saying they don't really get the blue in here. I probably would have turned that into a matte 
green like a beetlejuice green to go with the shimmer so my only complaint is just the last color here just not a huge fan of it but i mean it gets you where you need to be if you want that kind of smoked out look but the shimmers in here are stunning and the actual mattes also beautiful really great quality from nyx like this is comparable to urban decay Too Faced, some of those higher end brands that that charge $50 and even though this is 19 I still think it's really good it's better than many other formulas at the drugstore I think it's a great palette but I don't know if I personally will get a lot of use out of it because there's not a good shade to build some depth in here so it's just it's gonna be hit or miss but I think NYX did a good job this Revlon concealer is really nice this is the flexwear full cover Great coverage, but still feels very serum-like. It almost reminds me a little bit of my Laura Mercier concealer that I love so much. I feel like our under eyes look still very flawless, and I have a hard time with concealers usually. This one is doing really well, definitely comparable with a lot of my high-end ones that I love and use. It might be, honestly, top-tier drugstore concealer if you like a little bit more coverage than normal, but you don't want it to be dry and cakey under there. This is excellent. The e.l.f. brow pencil I personally could do without. Now, this is only four dollars but it's a little too creamy for me it's just not the formula that I like and no matter what the price is if I don't like the product I'm not gonna use the product so for me it's a pass I usually like a lot of elf stuff but this just wasn't it for me the Milani brow gel on the other hand 10 out of 10 so comparable to my high-end formulas like rare beauty Patrick Ta that I love so much that cost double the price this is so good and not just good for drugstore but just good in general this performs like a high-end brow gel the morphe blush in pleasured these are fun I really loved how this looked on the skin it gives you that gorgeous kind of pink glassy look and the formula is really good for such a glassy cream like this it does not remove your foundation underneath it does not mess with your other makeup I'm always looking for those kind of products and this one performs well over powder so overall the formula is great easy to work with I will say I feel like it's faded quite a bit though like I don't feel like it's still super prominent on the cheeks I can see a little bit it honestly just kind of looks like I have highlight there instead of the pink blush from earlier so I don't know if it's like super long wearing I'll have to give that one another try I know I did cover up with some powder and stuff that might have faded it a little bit but it just didn't seem to last as long as I had thought. I skipped over the Firework Mascara from Maybelline. This is a really good formula. Really nice lengthening, separating. I kind of wish it had a little more volume to it too though. I don't know if this one beats out the L'Oreal Panorama, I think it's called, in the gold packaging. I really love that one. I love the Milani Highly Rated, so I don't know if it's my favorite drugstore mascara, but I think it's really good, and it does outperform a lot of high-end ones. I love the pink packaging too. Maybe I'll come back to this after I've let it sit in my collection a couple weeks. It might dry out a little bit, and I might like it a little bit more, but I still think it's a good mascara. The CoverGirl lip stains are really nice. These are kind of going very viral at the moment and I can see why they just are easy to line the lips with they give a little bit of a stain left over sometimes if I'm just putting balm on if that was off I feel like my lips kind of look dead a little bit this just kind of keeps that stain which is nice I did put it with the gloss and I do feel like the gloss definitely fades it off faster I did re reapply it and just applied that by itself and it's comfortable it's not super drying like some stains can be it feels like nothing is there, but your lips still have a little tint to them. Much easier to use than, what was it, like the Wonder Skin ones we used in the last test testing new makeup that go on really crazy and you have to like peel it off, whatever. Those last longer, but I just like these a little bit better. I would honestly try a darker shade and see how that goes, but it's just kind of nice to have that leftover stain. You don't have to worry about it when you're eating, like getting lipstick on your chin or anything like that. I think having it with the hard candy lip oil, it kind of removed it a little bit fast. That's why I did reapply it on its own. These just wear off so fast because they are so oily. And I just prefer a thicker formula. I feel like the thicker the oil, the thicker the gloss, the longer it's going to last. I know everyone doesn't like a thick sticky gloss, but personally I do and these are just like pure slippery slidey lip oils so that's my thoughts on all this new drugstore makeup I swear the drugstore just keeps getting better and better and a lot of these were wins for me so far hopefully I can have some fun drugstore updates for you before the end of the year I don't know I always do like my end of year best and worst of the drugstore all year video but I really want to kind of narrow some things down 
do some declutters in between then because there's definitely some stuff I have tried that I didn't think was that impressive but so far a lot of these products were very highly rated highly talked about and I'm pretty impressed with most things so anyways all products will be linked down below thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye guys